tiger on the prowl I'ma make it go wild I'm original and I told you so I'm a kid in the candy store Put the leather on the denim I ain't the cure, I'm the venom If you wanna find me, find the taillights Something's coming in, you're gonna wanna take a red eye It's time to go It's time to go Get ready Good afternoon, evening, morning, and all of the things to you. I hope you're doing well. Keely Dunn, FH Empires, it's What Up Wednesday and we're back. Oh my gosh, we're back. I am very glad to be here and on a regular schedule again. It is back to school, it's back to life, it's back to patterns, and I don't know about you guys, but I've always felt very much like... um, that back to school time is my New Year's. It's my New Year's Eve. It's the time that I really take stock in what's happening in my life and make big changes and change routines, change patterns, because I was a student for so long. (laughs) Not just like the secondary days, but the post-secondary days, eight years. And it really dove into my psyche. So I'm interested in hearing how you guys are feeling about September, about getting back to routine, getting getting into things. Are you making any big changes? And what's in store for your hockey life? Because a lot of you got back out there and got back out on the pitch. So I want to hear all about this. And what did you do this weekend? What was your hockey? Now, I got to go turn on my comments because I can't even find them. And they're not coming up. And I don't know what's happening. I hope you guys are good. Say hi, and I will get to it and see who is here. As always, Ecamm Live Program. This is very, very interesting. Okay, I'll do it like this. I'm going to hunch down. I got to look at the top of my telestrator. I know it looks weird. If I knew my short keys off the bat, wouldn't be a problem. Okay. I got this. All right. Oh, and that's another thing I should be doing here is playing some background music. I hope that's happening for you. Nope. It's not starting yet. Here, let's do it this way. Okay. I can hear a little bit. It's So I changed my sound setup and it's not going to be anything maybe that you notice on your end, but I certainly do. And so I'm not hearing my voice back into my headphones like I usually do. And that is weird. That is so weird. Anyway. I got this. See? Change your routine. Change your pattern. Everything changes. This light is too bright. I'm just going to change it on the fly because that's how I roll. 
Wait, switch. There we go. Do I have fill lights? Yo, betcha I do. Okay, just trying to get it out of my eyes. Uh, okay. Right. Niels, first. Good job. And something different today. Rachel is on the rosé. Excellent choice. Well done, hun. Brian's here. Good to see you. Hope you're feeling good. Dr. D1 from South Evening. <laughs> good evening. from. <laughs> this might be happening a lot today. I got to admit to you right now. But Dr. D, good evening from South London. And I'm going to give you the official... Sir, I'm very excited you're here because I don't think I've seen you on a broadcast before. So, oh, wait, let me do it this way. So it's great to have you. Thanks for tuning in. And, but if you've been here before and I just didn't associate your name, sorry. Let me know who you are. Simon's here. Hi, third team. Ready with the stopwatch and the tea. <laughs> Ooh. Stopwatch, eh? Good to be here again and to see all the lovely people. Agree. Lou Raider's here. Hey, friend. It's party time. Greg's here. Excellent, because we're going to be talking about a couple of the scenarios from his... Not his, but just a recent tournament that he was involved in. So, there you go. Scott Riley's here. Good to see you, friend. Always good. Luke Pillworth, I appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in. Aline, you're finally back and you're so busy. Yes, I feel that. I know what the busies are like. I'm very busy and I'll let you know why in a couple seconds because I have some, I have news because why not? Why not? I should always have news. There we go. Now I'm a little smaller. Lucio's here, AJ and Florian Barslovich. Did I say it right? Hey, look, I just tried to, I like to challenge myself. I'm getting outside of my comfort zone. It's very important to do that. Um, you seem to have a strange issue that in your EFHID is not, I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> Niels, English, <laughs> I have enough challenges as it, is, as it is. There you go. EL's here, EL. L's here, listening on our way from work. Simon Jackson's here, and Lou, your season is back on. Excellent. I hope it's going well. I hope, uh... I hope you're enjoying it. I'm really feeling a different way about everything after such a long shutdown. It's just so nice just to be on the pitch that I am, I just am full of the gratitudes. That's all I can say. Um, so Scott, you had a great weekend tournament in Manchester to kick things off and great progression plans for umpires, including newbies up and running. That is fantastic. Come into the Discord and tell me more about that because I'm really interested in what other um, what other areas do for their development and all that kind of stuff. So that would be great. Simon, you've been doing some men's conference level games. Yeah, we've been talking about those. Great fun. Back to the ladies this weekend with an umpire coach too. I will send them money. Just tell me how much and who it is. And I will PayPal them some money. You've been on the few of the play alongs during the lockdown and you're down the road from Surbiton. There's a lot of people like you in the in the area. You got a really good hockey hotbed there. Simon, you've been crazy with people failing to register for EHO and then complaining to you and you can do nothing about it. Oh, I don't know what EHO is, but I have a feeling it's your appointment system that I've been hearing so many great things about. Yikes, hey. Uh, uh, goalkeeper Steven, I think, as we know him, is definitely not listening during a meeting. Good choice. Good choice, because I don't want you to get fired. Oh, your letter G isn't registering. Huh, you got a keyboard issue there, friend. Henry's super excited for the new season. Absolutely. Tomas is here, yes, with a glass of white. First match tomorrow evening, so mentally prepping for it with a glass of white. I really appreciate your style. Good work. <sighs> Juan Pablo, good to see you as well, sir. And Scott, you can't take the credit, although you did show me some of my videos. Oh, thank you. So that was Bob Anderson and Brian. Is that Brian Little? Um, 
Am I thinking of the right? I might be thinking of the wrong person because I think the, or Litchfield. Is it Litchfield? Anyway. I know people. I know people in the world. I'm a bit of a big deal. No, it's, it's one of the pleasures that I have is to be able to meet so many people and hear about uh, everybody's progress and keep in touch and who's doing cool things. So Ashfield and Linfield. Oh, okay. So I got one maybe right. Elaine, you're excited for the Belgian season. No kidding. Hey, uh, start last Sunday in the Netherlands. I start uh, next week with your two competitions you follow the most. Yes, always good. I have heard that, I mean, it, it, it wasn't enough for the men to win the, uh, the World Cup, but when they won the Olympics, now things are really, really exploding. And I've been hearing great things about numbers and part uptake in Belgium this season. So congrats, that's the Olympic effect, right? You get a, you get a gold medal and boom, things really kick it off. Use an external keyboard, your laptop also, or just a beard. Hi, Barry. Just popping in before Poland. <clears throat> Barry, you should have just said that you were busy doing other things instead of giving me specifics. Because now, now I'm feeling some kind of way about this. Football. But you have your first league games in a fortnight. Good to see. Uh, shouldn't EHL be the Euro Hockey League? Just saying. Yeah, there you go. Temporary ban. Okay, what are we going to talk about today? Um, I'm trying to keep it simple. I actually do have to admit to you guys that I'm not feeling my complete utter best. I know I still look fantastic, but on the inside, I'm not totally up to my usual snuff. So I am going to try to keep it a little simple. We might not be doing even a Keeley hour. We might not even be doing a real hour today. Let's, let's see how this goes. Let's see how this goes. But for the first stream back, I couldn't leave anybody hanging. I had to come in and I really miss you guys too. So today we are going to talk about, um, does the back of the stick also include the handle and what portion thereof that may be the case. Um, we're going to revisit a first shot being a hit on a PC scenario because there was an interesting one at the Euro men's two Divi two. And then we're going to look at the aerial guidance and the, so specifically, this was brought to my attention because Alex uh, has the new KNHB guidance in the Netherlands. And he had lots of questions that he wanted some help with on what, what constitutes an interception and how you handle five meters after an interception and all kinds of things like that. So I thought it'd be worthwhile to talk about it because... I think everybody needs to start understanding this, even if the guidance isn't specifically instituted in your area yet, or this is new to you and you're going, what the heck is this? This is the way that the game is going. So as with everything, it always starts at the top level and trickles its way down. So I'm not saying right now that you go running out here and try to do this. However, I do believe that the specific points of guidance we're gonna talk about today fit within the rules framework as they stand. So it's not like the rule is being changed. It's just they're specifically drawing out and explaining why a certain scenario does fit into the rule. That's what an interpretation is. So we're going to talk about that. Boy, that was a long explanation. And uh, before we get into that, I just want to share a little bit of news. A little bit of news. I have accepted a coaching staff position with the University of Calgary Dinosaur Program. Wait, do I have any cheers? I don't even have any cheers lined up here. Yay for me. I'm really excited. Uh, the University of Calgary is my alma mater and I feel very honored to be asked to assist 
My role is going to be mostly or more on the analysis side, but there is some coaching involved as the players have all found out. <laughs> so we, I had my first real day on the job uh, last night for practice. And if Rolvan Maastricht was listening to this, he'd be very happy to hear that I have kept his swear jar tradition alive. And I'm the one now doing all of the crazy language <laughs> at the girls. <laughs> and they just kind of go, okay. But it's a fantastic group of players. I'm really excited. There's a lot, a lot of really good athletes and they're all very anxious to learn and have fantastic attitudes. So I'm really excited about that. But I am going to be a little busy for the next two months <laughs> because I got you and FH Empire stuff. And now I've got that. So yeah, it's going to be a bit of a jam. But when you get asked, you know, you don't turn this kind of opportunity down. So, um, oh, there's some congratulations coming through. Thank you. Great news. Thank you. You expected different news. What kind of news do you expect from me? Who knows? What is my favorite dinosaur? Tomas. Uh, as I was growing up, my favorite dinosaur was a Triceratops. I just felt that that particular dinosaur was well-balanced. I like threes. And I just liked the concept of a low, powerful dinosaur um, who was very defensive minded, but could hurt people really badly if he needed to. It's kind of like me. So, uh, yes. Thank you, Barry. Lots of congrats. Thank you. Oh, look, see, we got a, we got some nerds on the case. Excellent. Very proud. Oh yeah. You want to do merch <laughs> nails. I was at the pitch for six hours yesterday. Um, excellent. Oh, it worked. Excellent. That is so good. Thank you very much. Blue Power Ranger for childhood. I have no idea what that is referring to. Wait, I've lost it. Anyway, I'll just leave that over my shoulder. Oh, there it is. I'm going to leave that there. So let's get into the show and Please do keep in mind, I would be very amenable to Dave in particular to jumping off on something that you would like to talk about specifically as well. If you have a particular question that's arisen, that kind of thing, please do put a Q in front of your question, Q colon, and pop it into the comments. I'll favorite it and I'll come back to it when I'm working through these scenarios. Okay. So let's go to the first one, the back of the stick and the handle. Now, I can't remember if I looked into this because of this situation or before that. I think it was because of this, because actually this isn't something I've thought about for a really, really long time. And that's what I love about the rules is that although we only have 14 of them, 15 of them, whatever, and a pack of definitions, and then a section that I ignore, at the back, the objectives, because they're very outdated. And I think they're quite misleading in some cases. Um, despite the fact there aren't very few, there are things that you won't see for a very long time in your career. And then you'll be like, oh, that thing happened. Oops, maybe I should have been ready for it. And that's why I really do advocate for all of us to have a look at the rule books on the regular. So actually, let's see if I can just pop this up really quickly. I'm going to put it in the comments. Actually, it's even easier. I've just put it popped in a link to the rules, official rules page on the FIH website. And what you'll see on there is you'll see a link to the app for the, um, for Android and for iPhone as well. And I'm going to tell you not to use it because it's not up to date. It has not been synchronized with the changes that they made in the January, 2020 and the November, 2019 changes. So it hasn't been touched since it's first uploaded and it caught me. I was on another discord server, not ours, 
ours is best. But I was on a different hockey Discord server and I answered a question based on, because I always go back and I check the rule to make sure that I'm on solid footing, went back and looked at it and it was the conditions under which a penalty corner is complete. And that has been changed in the, the amendments. That's not reflected in the rules app. So keep that in mind. That could, that could get you into trouble. So pop over here and download the PDF. The PDF will be the most recent version. It should say January, 2020, um, on the cover and that sort of thing. So there you go. The home screen is from first November 19. I don't know what you mean by home screen. If you mean that's the cover, then I don't know. Yeah, the last condition was removed. Okay, so until I have an opportunity to comb through each and do a comparison and make sure that the rules app and which things aren't in sync, you can't trust it, unfortunately. So just keep that in mind. I almost just poked myself in the eye. It's gonna be that kind of day. There you go. Yes, if you open the app, it says November, 2019. Okay, so it might include the November 2019 amendments, but I, I'm still not sure, but it doesn't contain January 2020. Okay, so let's look at our first scenario. What we're going to do is we're going to look at it first together and have a little chat. And then if I need to go back into the rules and, and go into the discrete things, I absolutely will. But Hi. <laughs> Did you know we have a Discord server? <laughs> uh, where's my scenes list? I don't even have my scenes list up since my stream deck is messed up. Okay. Scenes, here it is. I can recover you guys. I can do this. It's going to be fine. Okay, here's the scenario. Qualifying for Scotland, Andy Bull. He's taking the shot on here. Ireland's. Well, he's, the umpire's pointed to the penalty spot here. Now. Irish player's stick was on the, on the floor. I'm afraid I've don't have a monitor to, to watch this on because of the uh, earlier rain so the umpires I think it, are going to have a conversation with each other the Irish player's stick was certainly on the floor to me it was a question whether the ball whether he picked a stick up in time or the umpire's not going to change his mind it's going to be a penalty stroke Okay, so this is a replay of the scenario. Now, one of the interesting parts about that whole thing, again, is you all know how much I love Nick Irvine. But in that situation, just because he hadn't seen the discreet part about this, his commentary may have led you astray in terms of um, what was happening and what the uh, what the, the the difficulty or the question was. So always keep that in mind. Oops, this is kind of a crazy thing happening here. Really try to ignore the commentators, not because they're bad people, but because they don't always know best. And as soon as we start. Uh, hanging our thoughts and we do it immediately we do it immediately we start hanging on to what the commentators are saying and that shapes what we think and I hear it happen all the time when people ask me questions because they'll even phrase their questions with the precise wording that a commentator used maybe completely not consciously like they they're not aware that they're even doing it but that is definitely in the mix there 
So Nick was talking about whether the player had picked up the stick quickly enough. That's not the problem. He does. He drops it. He picks it back up. And then he plays the ball with the handle of a stick. Okay, so we're going to talk about whether this is part of the back of the stick or the fair side. Okay, Luke, if you have a crazy long chamois going down the stick, does it back stick exist? If a tree falls in a forest, um, yes, actually it does. Let's talk about it. Um, Henry, I'm going to favorite your question. That's fantastic. Just make sure you put a Q and a colon in front of it so I can do a search. Okay. Um, and I'll, yeah, I'll come to that in a second. So one of the things that we need to be aware of when we're talking about the back of the stick is that it's not just the flat playing surface as far as the flat playing surface exists. It actually, when you look at the stick specifications, and let's see if I can pull this up. This might be a little bit tricky for me to do on the fly, but I am going to give it a try because I believe in myself and I believe in you. Okay, so I'm going to use this. I got a total squircle going on. This is really fun. Show the primary display. I don't want to do that. I want to show preview. Okay, no corners. Because that'll be easier. Okay, let me see if I can. Oh, it's tall. That's why that's not working very well. Just talk amongst yourselves. I got a little music playing. It's all good. Option, drag. Okay, I'll do this. Let's see what happens when I do that. Who knows? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll. You might not be able to see all of it. Um, because I'm gonna try to flip through does that make it better? Mm, sort of. I'm going to try to s s flip through to the back. Now, when I say ignore things in the back of the rulebook, I don't mean the equipment and stick specifications. <laughs> That's not the part that I meant. Because that stuff is still very relevant and still very, very helpful. So, yeah. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Right. So we're going to go to the back of the rule book. You can kind of see me scrolling on the other side. So the stick spe specification starts at around page 60, 60 ish. Oh boy. This is just such a long section. Yeah. It kind of starts on 58, but it's 59 and then it comes through. So one of the things that you need to understand and you need to look at, first of all, is 2.6, okay? The playing side of the stick is the entire side shown in figures three and four and the edges to that side, okay? So this is figure three here, this bad boy, and then that's figure four. So the what they say is that the playing side of the stick is that which you can see and all the way up. So that means that the handle isn't the whole thing. That is not a playing side of the stick. That the back side of the handle is actually the back side of the stick and cannot be used to play the ball with. Now, one of the things that really drives me crazy as a lawyer is looking at things like when they say playing side of the stick, and then they don't have the same kind of definitions in the actual rules. Because what you, what you do when you compose a law is you, let me make myself a lot bigger. You, you use the same terminology, the exact same words. They're called defined terms so that 
everybody is very clear that you're talking about the same thing. There's no ambiguity whatsoever. So when I see different terms being used for the same concept, it opens up this, well, that's, that's the playing side of the stick. It doesn't say that it's not the back side of the stick and such like that. So when you look at the back side of the stick provision, um, where is it? Okay. The players must not play the ball with the back of the stick. Now the back of the stick is only defined in the stick specifications. Let me double check. So I'm gonna go through, okay, hey, terminology. This is what we do every time, right? When you have a question, you're gonna go through the terminology and make sure that you don't have something in here. Okay, there's no backside of the stick here. So the only definition is that which in, is in the back and it talks about the playing side of the stick. It doesn't talk about the backside of the stick. So there's two options. Rules Committee, either the rule, the definition in the stick specification should say the back side of the stick is the side opposite to what you can see in figure three, or you put in a figure five that has the rounded side of the stick shown, oops, sorry, that you have the rounded side of the stick shown, and then you, then you've got the same words, or you change the wording in section nine to say players must use the playing side of the stick or the playing surface. Do you see what I mean there? It just makes makes life a lot easier. Okay, let me just check the comments and see where we're at because I can see um, Greg's got some nonsense going about a heat wave. You live in the UK, it's not happening. Unless you're having a heat bubble like we did earlier this summer and that was serious. We were up to 43 degrees centigrade. Okay. The playing side includes the handle. The back of the stick isn't defined, but because of the diagram, I think the handle has a front and the back too. Yes, okay, so that's the conclusion that I drew. It's the conclusion that's been reinforced to me by the rules committee. So I know that's the case. Yes, players can only use the playing side, right? Like we could avoid a lot of problems if we just clean up language in a few things. Okay, um, let's see. Tomas, did the Ireland player get a yellow card for that high impact breakdown? Okay, let's go back to the scene and let's have a look at exactly what we see. And we'll go back to the slow-mo here. Okay. So the question from Tomas, did the Irish player receive a yellow card too? No, we did not. And oops. Okay, so that's a, f that's not the freeze frame there. But yeah, you can see that's the handle of the stick. Now what we can't really see in this video very well is how, like what side of the stick is actually being used, okay? But Greg helped me out with this, that the stick is in the player's right hand and the toe is up when he picks it up, okay? And that means, if I had a stick in my hand, I'd be able to show you, but that means that he's got the back side of his stick right there. And that's, I mean, that's just unlucky because if he had flipped it the other way, he would have been okay. All right, so Tomas, sorry, I kind of flipped away from your question there, but I think in this situation, where you have the very large remedy of a penalty stroke available to you, you don't necessarily need the, um, you don't need the yellow card with it. I would feel like that's just a lot. Does everybody agree with that? Does anybody have any other thoughts? To the contrary, I'd like to hear it. I would expect to see that if it was a physical breakdown for which the personal message needs to be sent physical or dangerous. I would also expect to see it if it was a repeated instance, but this was the first one. So Barry, this happens more with, than what you think with goalkeepers. Yeah. So often when they move to their stick, let's see, I'll go like this. So they've got their stick in this hand. So when they, when they go over to this other side, 
sometimes they're not as good at turning their hand and making sure that their toe is down, but their toe is actually up when they're playing over here. Um, yeah, especially when you have four sides to take the penalty strokes. He actually missed one in the tournament, apparently. I heard Nick saying that on the commentary. So he scored like seven and missed an eighth or something like that. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I don't think he scored seven penalty strokes, but he scored four, I think. All the defenders are so surprised it's a penalty stroke is probably massive enough message. Yeah, there was a lot of wetting, wasn't there? Huge amount of wetting. So um, I think also there was a whistle timing um, issue. I wouldn't have expected any to play, anybody to play advantage off that penalty stroke because it was near the top of the circle. There was a lot of traffic. You wouldn't think that that's a, a goal a probable goal opportunity that advantage is actually the better remedy. So the ball actually does end up going in the net. And if I just go back to the actual scene, um, I will do that. Full of thing. For but I'm gonna, the ball. I'm gonna mute Taking my friend Nick here. for a second, as much as I adore him. So the ball do, does go in the net and the player with the most indignation that we see on the screen is that dude right there. McConnell, he's really unhappy that he didn't get the advantage so he could score the goal, but players stopped because of the whistle, and that's why that ball really did go in. So, not a thing. Yeah, he scored four penalty strokes and missed a fifth one. Thanks, Greg, for confirming that. Your logic would be, Tomas, if it prevents a probable goal, no card plus penalty stroke, if deliberate, no effort to play on the correct side, yellow card and penalty stroke. Yeah, okay, and that's fair. And I think... When you look at the situation, guy's got his, he's got a big glove on his hand at the same time. That would be really tough. It would be really tough to say that you cynically, it's not the same as sticking out a foot. Okay. There was extenuating circumstances that impact his ability to pick up his stick properly. And that extenuating circumstance being that I think that's Andy Bolt. Well, anyway, a Scottish player is a is coming down his throat and is about to, you know, so he's just going to try to make whatever scramble play he can. Still a breakdown, though, okay, that is worthy of that penalty stroke. So, Simon, you gave a penalty stroke against a goalkeeper. Everyone said, what was that for? Goalkeeper said, oh, sh oh, sh forgot to turn the stick over. Yeah, it does happen, okay? Any more questions about this? I think it was worth, you know, going through and having a look at because it's not something we see very often with players. And think about how you would you would call back of the stick um, on the ground if, for example, the player is playing the ball in the air with the handle in the wrong portion and things like that. I'm trying to think of ways that this might come up a bit more often, but if that makes, you know, some sense to you, then hopefully that is, yeah, hopefully that's good. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm going to have a look and see if I can, new camera, um, interesting. I was gonna try to put my I was going to try to put my green screen up so that I could telestrate for you, but it's not happening right now. Ecamm doesn't see the, the iPad. Hmm, that's too bad. Okay. So I'll move on to the next one. Another first shot on a penalty corner situation. This one's really good as well. So let's have a look again this is from the european european championship two in niesno golden winning the ball back oh, unselfish no goal for scotland fired into the roof of the net sorry that probably came through really uh, loudly my apologies austria protesting and they may uh empires i think are consulting here don't think the decision is going to be changed. And 
umpire confirms the goal. I think Austria protesting the first shot at goal. Didn't hit the backboards. I'm, uh, I'm only guessing. Both umpires under, under pressure. And I'm letting this run for a reason because I want you to see what happens Stone after Walker's that. Walker's been credited with the goal. Still, the protest goes on here. Most of it at the moment being aimed at the uh, disengaged umpire. Our son, the captain, comes forward. So, uh, Scotland have the lead here. Controversial, it may be, but it was a great finish. Okay, so we're going to do a two-part discussion. We're going to talk about this first shot, and then we're going to talk about the afters after, because I'm really interested in hearing more about that. Um, just going to respond to Stefan here uh, with a little bit of advice on teaching the goalkeeper to roll the wrist. Yeah, lots of people don't have that problem, but some people do. So here we go. So we're going to watch this. I'm just going to let it roll in slow-mo. And sorry if it looks blurry. Obviously, I'm trying to zoom in so that we can get the best possible picture. But as soon as you do that with a low pixel, like 1080p does not help us here. This is why you need 4K and 8K and all that kind of thing is so that we can actually see things in um, properly when we zoom in. So th the point at which we f have our first contact with the defender is about here. Okay. And whether the defender touches the ball or not is not the important thing. It's whether the action that that attacker on the left committed is something that could be construed as a shot on a PC. Okay. And we've had some discussions on the Discord uh, a couple times about whether a ball traveling towards or being pushed in the direction of the goal is sufficient enough. Now this little 3D maneuver, a little pop chip over, that is definitely going in the direction of the goal. But is that a shot on goal? Would we consider that to be a shot? Okay, this is the hit that ends up scoring right here. So I'm interested in your thoughts on this. And I'm realizing that it'd be really useful to pull up that clip that I had from way back. Way back on a What Up Wednesday. So let's see if I can find it on the fly. And who was it? It was Belgium versus Spain, but it was in Spain. So it'll be Spain versus Bell. That didn't find it. Spain versus Bell. What would I have called it? First shot high. Found it! Okay. I'll sink this down. We'll have a look at it. So your thoughts, gang. Uh, Simon, for you, free hit defense. Okay. And tell me why, because you and I had this talk specifically in the Discord. So I want to know how this is different than the New, New Zealand penalty corner that you pointed out to me that you wanted to sort through whether that initial movement towards in the direction of the goal could have been considered a first shot. Rachel's in on that same thing here. Stefan, I don't think it's a shot. It would not be a goal. It is a setup and a pass, not a shot. Yeah, and I think specifically, Stefan, we can focus on that maneuver not intending to reach the goal. And I've, I've tried to make sure that we don't say that it has to be a great shot or with a likelihood of scoring, but that the attempt is to get it at least towards attacking-wise that if nobody else was there, it could go on the goal sort of thing. For Rachel, playing not, player not playing the ball in the direction just happens to go in that direction. Yeah. 
For Simon, don't think it was a shot at goal. It's just a chip of the defender's stick. Yeah, it was just an evasive maneuver. So dribbling the ball into a position where you then are happy as a player that I'm going to take a shot from here, that first direction in the direction of the goal, that first dribble, that first tap, that's not a shot at goal. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll pull this one in. Tomas. Okay, let's go back to Lou first. Oh. Oh, we got a whole bunch here. Okay, first. Yope. Not a shot on goal, in your opinion. You think is intended to go past the defender, not to score. Yup. Simon, a free hit defense and a chat with a defender for throwing a stick. I didn't see that one. Simon, are you talking about the dude in the net? Let's watch for this. I've got this slow mode so slowly. So Simon, if that is what you're talking about with the throwing of the stick, I would venture to say that that is getting into the area of officiousness. Because he is reacting. Yes, he has put himself in that dangerous position, but he's not reacting out of frustration or anger. He's reflexively trying to get a stick on the ball and as well save his life that he has put into danger. So he's not he's not throwing his stick, yeah, for, for any other reason than that, okay? And he was probably pretty astonished since we've all, like it's been unanimous with, with everybody here that that was the first shot. He was probably surprised that he was put in that position you know, that he needed to make the stop as the ball was going by his head because that shot should have been on the, on the carpet. Or, sorry, that shot should not have been raised to a height more than 460 millimeters. Lots of passes and dribbling for, Tom, uh, for Lou. Um, for Tomas, not convinced it was intended. Do, do, do. Aftermath needed a quick restart to avoid excessive protest or a green card for the excessive protest. Okay, we'll talk about that in a sec. Scott, it's also important to mention that while they do have to be in the circle, shots don't have to be on target. Yeah, um, so that's obviously a shot at goal does not have to actually be directly at goal. And that's because, um, let's see if I can go back to that other scene that I had set up properly. <coughs> okay, and that's because of here, the shot at goal. Okay, the ball may miss the goal, but the action is still a shot at goal if the player's intention is to score with a shot directed towards the goal, the goal. Okay, so that is, that is what Scott is referring to, that it doesn't actually have to get to the goal. And we've, We've gone through this discussion a few times that we we change how accurate the shot needs to be in order to satisfy the rule, depending on which rule we're talking about. And I know that's one of those, what are you talking about? That's inconsistent. But what we're doing is we're giving the benefit of the doubt according to the spirit of the rule. So if we're talking about danger, okay, if the ball is hit at a player who is putting themselves in a position at the goal, we say that that ball really has to be going at the target, has to be going into the goal. If it's going a smidge wide on video referral, obviously with the help of that kind of thing. But if you believe that ball's going wide, you're gonna call that as a free hit defense for danger. Because in the spirit of the rule, we're saying, look, yeah, we're we're putting the responsibility on the defender, but to balance out that. It's got to be right on target. I hope that makes sense. Rule relativism. I know it's fun. Okay. 
Um, so yeah, Simon, that's what we're talking about. I hope that I hope that makes sense to you that you're not, you know, too concerned about that. Oh boy, pressing all the wrong buttons here. Okay, for Luke, looks like the player there is trying to evade the defender. The defender stick. No, it, where this? No, he's he's cheering. He's cheering. Sorry, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. We. Yeah, I just don't see this as one that you need to intervene in. Okay, there's no venom in it. There's no nothing. He is literally reacting to a ball that shouldn't be coming at him that way. And going like this. And if you haven't, if you haven't tried to stop a shot on the line, and I do my uttermost, <laughs> my uttermost. <laughs> I do my utmost to make sure that I'm never <laughs> playing the post because I think it's dumb. But there was a time in indoor a few years ago that I made a fantastic save. I was on the left post. I don't know why I was defending there, but I was. And I'm not the greatest player, I'm just saying. And yes, the ball was coming at my head and I was able to sort of duck and get my stick and I really had to throw my stick in order to get in front of my face and as a result the ball you know you could have construed it that I was I was batting it like out of play or over the end line or anything like that but in those situations you've got to have some empathy for the player who's having the ball flung out right I hope that makes sense yeah he's trying to block and get out of the way at the same time yeah, but do you want your chats to be about things that matter? So that anytime you have a chat, players go, oh, geez, Simon Jackson's coming to have a chat with us. This is important. Or do you want them to be like, oh, he's going to talk to us some about something again that, you know, that nobody gives a, a crap about, right? Spend your time on the things that make a difference so that players are attuned to you being an umpire of significant things so that every word is hung upon that they take that and can go oh now i know this is important to simon there i'm not going to mess this up again okay for those of you who are in yellow you can follow simon's link to the scenario we talked about in the discord i don't think i've made Sometimes I make clips publicly available so that they're helpful for discussions, but I don't think I've marked that one as publicly available. Maybe. You're from New Zealand. It, I mean, welcome. Did, did I give you the air horn? Did I give you an air horn? Here. There you go. Very warm welcome. Uh, yes. Simon, uh, sorry, Scott, attackers also have the responsibility of playing it safely. So when there's a defender there, I feel it does need to be on target. Yes. Okay. So that's, yeah, that's part of why we're doing that balancing act. Oh, okay. That, that, that's fine, Luke. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard for me to understand exactly what we're talking about. That's why I use video so much. Because as soon as we use words, we all get confused as to what everybody means. You opened a game two weeks ago during a PC. There was a shot on goal. The shot was going wide, not much, and a player, and it hit a player in her stomach. You gave a free hit defense. The other umpire was signaling that. Was it the correct call? For me, yeah. Yeah, and again, it's about, um, it's about satisfying our spirit of safety and danger. So... A defender there wouldn't expect to have to defend themselves and shouldn't be expecting to defend themselves because if she's not in the goal, she's not putting herself in a, in a dangerous position. She, if she's outside the post and the ball's going wide, well, she hasn't done anything wrong. And then she's taking the ball in the, in the stomach. So, yeah, I, th I think it's the right call. Was, there's not many attackers out there who are going to come running up to you and saying, but wait. It doesn't have to be on goal. I intended it to be on goal and I just kind of missed. <laughs> According to the definition under the rule book, players don't know this stuff and we don't want them to know. I'm just kidding. Players are going to know this stuff on my teams anyway. 
Players were expecting the call and everyone accepted it. Yep. Until he hears it was going wide. Okay. Right. I see what you mean. Okay. Stefan, how do you become a yellow member? Moderators, get on this. Okay, I'll do it then. <laughs> you can go have a look at what we do with FH Umpires. Um, if you just go, just follow this link here, fhu3t.com. That should take you to the third team explanation. You can see what we do with the third team. So there is, wait, I hope this will work. Yeah. Haha, <laughs> let's take a break. So to support with a green membership, you can pay $3 a month. With yellow, it's $17 U month, $17 US a month. And you can join as an association for red as well. Now, I am going to give you the heads up that starting in November, the prices are going up. So if you're thinking about this, if you're on the fence, this is not a hard sell technique, but I want to give you full disclosure that I'm planning on raising the prices because I want to make sure that I'm still able to provide a high level service to the people who are already in the community. That's really important to me. I've been thinking about over the summer what I can do more to support. And yeah, that's one of the things I've come up with is that it is, you know, important to make sure I take care of the people who are here. So there you go. For Rachel, subtle difference. If it hits an attacker defender in the stomach, free hit. For danger, just a simple free hit. Sure. And yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So that's what Scott's agreeing with, that even a shot on target can still be dangerous. Absolutely. We look at proximity. We Proximity of the defender to the shot. We look at surrounding players is there a lot of other traffic that's going to get in the way potentially uh, of a defender being sighted uh, their proximity to the goal and that sort of thing Niels we have very nice huddles with FHUT <laughs> FHU3T yellow I should just take my time yes we do it's fantastic. There's lots of stuff in there. So please have a look and just feel free to hit me up. If you pop over to the discord, that's a great place to, um, to get me with questions. I seem to be spending way more time there than I spend anywhere else. Where is my discord? I don't know why I don't have a discord thing, but that's okay. I can do it right now, right now. Watch me on the fly. If you just go to fhempires.com forward slash discord, or you do this, Whew. okay, this bad boy right here, and you can, let's see if this is going to work, okay, pop it and join. We have 334 members now, which is crazy. Very exciting and yes it's a great place to have the discussions that are moderated constructive and have the right tone and that I occasionally swear in I'm sorry it's who I am for Greg is the player in a natural position to be defending in the scenario yes so we're, to, we're back to whether shots on goal can be dangerous one of our favorite conversations of all time and when I say one of our favorite conversations of all time, I mean the one that I least like to have all the time. <laughs> anyway, are they in a natural position? If they are, if it's on target, isn't the be all. If the defender's in a position that is more unexpected, then it's hard to sell. Okay, I like to be more specific about this. That's an okay start. But for me, I get back to the principle of not just the player with the ball can be the one who causes danger. A player without the ball can certainly cause themselves danger. They can throw themselves on the floor when they're not a goalkeeper and like lay down and be like, ah, that can put themselves in a very dangerous position. So they are the person causing danger and need to be penalized for that. Okay. A defender who 
puts themselves in a position around the goal to be saving a shot at goal, not defending a player or attempting to dispossess the ball. And when I say defending a player, I mean marking an attacking player or trying to dispossess the ball. Then that defender is potentially and likely causing themselves danger if the ball strikes them. Now, there's some interesting, I've been watching a few clips that have been coming out of the NCAA uh, college and through U.S. field hockey, and I, they're getting themselves a little bit in a twist because there's a lot of conversation about blocking passing lanes. And that's worthy of talking about because that is a legitimate way to play defense. I think zonal marking inside your own circle is stupid, to be totally honest. I don't know why anybody would play that as a system. But if you're, if you're two on one and there's tons of room and there's nobody around, then blocking a passing lane does make sense. But in some of the scenarios I've seen, the player is not blocking any passing lane because there's no player behind them that the ball could possibly get to. So they're not standing in a passing lane at the point at which the ball goes by them and then gets shot at the goal. They're just, they're standing in no person's land. And you need to have a really strong hockey sense to understand. And that's where sort of the, the language that Greg was using about things being natural for the defender. Is it a natural position for them to be in? So I get what Greg's saying, but I do like to try to tie it back and make it as sort of, you know, direct as possible because this is a very difficult concept, right? We really do struggle with this as a community. So there you go. And Niels is back to the Discord that you can ask questions to the community. Absolutely. You ask questions to everybody and I just make sure that we stay on the right track and we get everything going. So I I love that everybody gets a chance to develop their their principle driven intellectual process because that's a really huge part and that's why I always ask for your input here on these live streams is like okay what do you guys think and why and I try to get you to explain yourselves if you're a little bit you know on the fence and that's that's how you get better I learned how to argue about umpiring rules on forums and having to explain myself in words without the luxury of having any kind of video whatsoever so that's how I develop my chops you can do the same thing as well but I do make sure everything stays on the right tone and we get to the right results so there you go Stefan you saw me on YouTube a couple days ago that's what YouTube's for discoverability thank you I'm really glad to hear that Stefan so come over to the discord and we'll get to know each other even more with all the community um for Greg uh for example, a defender is hit on the line, hit high from within five meters compared to a defender a bit further out with five meters is a more natural defensive position. Yeah, for the most part. But a lot of that will also depend on what were they doing before that shot was released, who was where, all that kind of stuff. It's, there, there's a lot, of, a lot of pieces to the puzzle. And you're limited to any characters on YouTube. <laughs> Trust. I know exactly how that feels because I'm always doing that. Yes, the algorithm works. Isn't that nice? Absolutely. Okay. Um, that was really great. I, I'm i glad we got a chance to take a look at that. Um, big thanks to Greg for sending those or drawing those clips to my attention. He messaged me on the Discord and let me know and said, hey, these would be good to talk about. And I agree. So by the same token, if you have something especially if it's video based, I will answer every question and I will find examples in order to flush out the principles so that we can generate our shared understanding. But if you see something that I can clip and I can bring out and we can all talk about with that, that uh, agreed upon basis of facts, this is very legal as well. This is how you argue appellate law. You have your agreed upon facts and then you just argue principles. Boom. Anyway, so um, yeah, if, if you find clips, even if you just say, hey, I don't have the clip, but I saw this in this game. Can we talk about it? I would love, love, love to hear from you. So 
pop over to Discord and put them in. If you'd like to have a discussion on a more immediate basis, you don't want to wait for a What Up Wednesday, then you can go into the Ask FHU channel. Now, let's see if I can just do this on the fly because I don't know where my Discord scene went. I had one. I had one and it's gone, but I can do this. Haha! -ha. I'm very large. Oh my god, there's two of me. Okay, so this is what the Discord server looks like on light mode. Yes, Niels, Lucio, whoever else wants to tease me about light mode. I'll make myself a little smaller over here. Um, this is what the Discord server looks like, and if you're looking at this going, holy schmoly, this looks pretty crazy, don't you worry. It took me about two weeks to get a handle on it. It's kind of like Facebook groups and WhatsApp texts and old school builds and boards and internet relay chats, RCs and Zoom and Clubhouse all in one. It's, it's got like all those things all together. So don't be shy. So if you have a scenario that you'd like to go through that you want a more immediate answer on or a different style of discussion, then pop into the Ask FHU channel. Okay, but you can see we have tons of stuff, tons of areas that we talk about, uh, and this is where I can provide some of the specific, you know, bonuses to green members that comes for everybody in FHU 3T, and I think hopefully you can see me bolding and scrolling over this stuff. You know, we've got specific chat and announcements, and this is for everybody that's in green and yellow. And then I've got a bunch of stuff that just happens. So we hold our watch parties in here and our huddles. And it's awesome. And we have chats, but I'm not going to poke on that because th those are private. What happens in yellow stays in yellow. That's the rule. Okay. So thank you very much. I am going to leave the uh, aerial discussion because we're already at 110 and aerial guidance, it's going to take us a long time. Like, let's not, let's not get it twisted friends. It's not an easy one to go through. And I'm probably like really running out of steam here. So, um, let's do that next week. Bring your scenarios, bring your questions. I'm going to do a ruler Tuesday based on this back of the stick rule. Um, that will come out on YouTube next Tuesday. And yeah, so that series is starting up again or resuming. So if you have a really Tuesday idea, you're like, Hey, this particular rule number, give us a, give us a eight minutes or less synopsis on how this works. I would love to do that. It's a lot easier for me to generate content if I don't have to think about it. <laughs> if I don't have to come up with my own ideas, if I don't have to be creative, I'm a lot better at my job. <laughs> There you go. Oh, see, there we go. Everybody getting mad at Discord and light mode. Okay, but Niels, you'll be happy to hear that I have it tuned now so that when it's actually nighttime, it goes into dark mode the way that the rest of my Mac does. I've learned the bonus if I'm working at night, not when I was doing the Olympics. During the Olympics, it's like light mode all the time because I had to pretend I was in the daytime. But if it's late at night, having everything dimmer really helps, especially if you're live streaming, then the reflection from the screen isn't like, woo, bright blue light on your face. Yeah, I think it looks, it, it looks more intimidating in dark mode. Let me show you how that, I, I'm gonna just show you that really quickly. I think I can do this. If I go to appearance, okay. So this is dark mode. Now I look at this and it, it just makes all of the icons and all the hashtags and the emojis and stuff. I don't know. This look, just looks more, I'm just saying. So what you can do is you can just go to your parents and you can go sync with computer and it's daytime for me, friends. The days are getting shorter, but it's still daytime because it's 1 13. Ah, Nils's eyes are burning. And yes, we say that every week. Oh, hi, Ian. <laughs> Better late than never. You're going to be hashtag replay squad. That's for sure. 
Yes, and the Good Call channels. Yeah, they're there. We're going to talk. We're going to pull that back and 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 get that going next week as well. So, Niels, it's not that there's new rules. It's just that there's guidance directions that that are being promulgated as a result of the last um, the last two big tournaments, the Euros and the Olympics, and they're. V- I am guessing that there's going to be guidance. Oh, and that brings me back. That'll bring me back to um, what's coming out in the new rule book, which Henry Beardsall. Sorry, I didn't mean to leave that for quite so long. Asking about rule changes coming. They usually review the rules after each Olympic cycle, correct, they do after every Olympics and World Cup. So for the last, I think the last one was 20, I think 20 or 2007 was the the start of the two year cycle. So it was 2007, 2009, 2011, 13, 15, 15, okay. And now we're all messed up. This is gonna be a 2022 rule book. And then there's probably going to be a 2023 rule book because there will be a World Cup in 2022, I think. What are they doing with that? Yeah, I think I think that's the case. The logic behind that is, Henry, that they don't want to change anything material for teams that are going into very high stakes competitions too soon before that. So they don't want to make a change in the year prior to the Olympics or the World Cup. So they make the change immediately after. So teams have, you know, a year and a half at least to incorporate that into their new tactics and their new understanding and and get really nicely acquainted with everything. So that is the rationale behind it. And yes, the rules committee is hard at work. There's some new additions to the personnel that we'll see. I'm very excited that my friend Soledad Iparaguile is now on the rules committee and she's going to be fantastic. She's a lawyer as well as being, you know, the queen of umpiring in Argentina and arguably worldwide. Um, She is now an FHUM. She's one of my mentors and she is a very, very smart individual. And because she has that legal training, she's going to bring that asset base with her. So like massive coup for the FH to be able to get her on that committee. So very glad for that. Am I feeding her suggestions? Not yet. Will I? Absolutely. (laughs) So, um, yes, there will be a new rules book coming out with effect from January 1st, 2022 in all probability. And if it doesn't come out, it's because of extenuating circumstances. It's a COVID problem. It's a, something, 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 but that is the plan as I understand it. All right. Um, I think I've got to everything. Don't forget to hit the like button. Yes. Thank you very much, Simon. I appreciate that. And, um, I don't have a life because I work at night. Uh, have you met me? I, I just do it. Okay, everybody's talking about the dark mode. It's gorgeous. You guys are crazy. Come on. Have we talked about the five meter travel before the circle with free hits? Even free free hits from the sideline are being counted. Yes. Come into the Discord and let's talk about it. Because, yeah, that's something that is probably, you're going to find a lot of uh, really good, consistent feedback on that issue. What I'm saying is, yeah, correct. But let's talk about it. Okay. Let's, let's make sure we work through so that you understand the principles and why everything goes the way it does. Yes, it does look meaner. Do you guys not know Hollywood? The bad guys are always in dark. 23, 2023 for the men's world cup. Okay. I think there's still really there. from my conversations with and what I've heard from people directly involved in the rules committee, it's supposed to come out January 1st. So, but it's quite early. Yeah. So they're not going to wait 
So not, it's not going to be a 2023 rule book, right? So they'll get it out as soon as possible. You're very welcome, Rachel. It's always good to see you. I hope your rosé was lovely and you're looking forward to getting back to some hockey. I got to umpire last night for the first time, like, like a league, like instead of uh, kids, I did a league game last night and it was nice. It was an emergency basis, but it was nice to get back out there. Um, thoughts on the Mike Ox, Oxnell, HWC situation in field hockey. Moonwolf, I do not know of which you speak. Welcome to the broadcast. Um, yeah, so maybe quickly let me know what that is, just in case there's that's something I really should address before I go. Dark Mode's awesome, says Stefan. Oh, come on, you guys. Can I just get some support here? Just a, just a little... It's been a gold nugget. I think he meant a gold nugget, but a gold nugget is good too. Good to see you, Scott. Always appreciated. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Come on, mods. I have no idea what any of that might have been. Great to see you. Um, come to the discords. Stay in touch. I'll be back next week with a What Up Wednesday. Watch parties will start up again next week. And yeah, have a great weekend of hockey coming up for those of you who are able to get back on the pitch and I was going to say DFU but I don't need to do that it's great to have you there there we go Simon he's got my back not a fan of dark mode yes thank you for your contributions in particular Greg bye Lucio everybody have a great one talk to you soon